Right, and I had a friend share a video on Facebook in Destrahan of water getting into his home. So if you uh, have had some impacts today, hopefully uh, we see some drier conditions. Unfortunately, I am tracking the potential for more rainfall, though, as we go throughout the day today. River levels are going to continue to rise, too. We've had a lot of rainfall across the North Shore over the past 12 hours. The Bogafalaya at Camp Covington and um, over toward Boston Street is going to continue to rise. Moderate to minor flood stages for all of these locations. So if you live in and around these areas, you're going to have water covering those roadways going into the weekend. We set a daily record for rainfall at the New Orleans airport yesterday. By midnight, it had over four and three quarters of an inch of rainfall. It helps out with the drought, but you just don't want to see this much rainfall in a short period of time. If you notice, the year to date rainfall was at 20 inches. We've got about 13 inches of rainfall within an 8 to 12 hour period just in parts of St. Tammany Parish, and that's led to some flooding near Bidico, the Madisonville, Goodby, Covington, Robert areas really inundated with rainfall yesterday evening. As we look down toward the South Shore, my friend in Destrahan saw some flooding there over nine inches of rainfall, five for Laplace. And as we look down toward the coast, we've had some ongoing rainfall near the LaRose area, also indicating seven to eight inches of rainfall there. The heaviest rain now pushing offshore. You still have some pretty heavy rainfall near Grand Isle here in the New Orleans metro area. Not too much happening. There is the storm report of some flooding over toward Destrahan earlier today, and then several reports in and around Tangibaho and St. Tammany parishes. We've had some heavy rainfall. It's been lingering over Manshack. That's finally starting to lose some of its intensity, thankfully. It didn't move over the Madisonville area and stay there because there would have been a more flooding due to all the rainfall that they've already had. Now, as we go through the morning and into the afternoon, unfortunately, we do still have the potential for more rainfall with daytime heating. Could even get some thunderstorms as you see it kind of bubbling up here as we go into the afternoon and early evening. So not only a flood threat continues, but we'll also add in a severe weather threat potential where we could have some 60 mile per hour wind gusts and some hail included in some of these storms. That's why most of southeast Louisiana and coastal Mississippi is highlighted in that marginal risk for severe weather. And to remind you what that means, some isolated severe storms. So one or two capable of severe weather parameters, winds 58 miles per hour, hail up to an inch in diameter, and it is a low tornado risk. But also when we see this heavy rainfall, the concern for flooding as indicating one to three inches of additional rainfall is possible and still kind of honing in on those areas on the North Shore and closer toward the lake. So you'll want to stay weather aware as we head through the day. So we've got the rain and storms there, but also monitoring a disturbance around the Florida Keys, bringing a lot of rainfall into parts of the Bahamas. Hurricane season doesn't begin until June 1st, but this little system moving into the West Atlantic has an 80% chance of becoming our first named storm, which would be Arthur. The good news is no impacts to our area. As you're heading out the door, be aware of those flooded roadways. Temperatures are starting out in the low to the mid 70s. We'll have rain and storm potentials throughout the day. A little bit of a break on Saturday, then Sunday, more rain and storms before we finally dry out going into early next week.